Welcome everybody back to the Hit in the Turnbuckle podcast. This is the Raw Review Show. Monday Night Raw finished a good few hours ago. And you know, they always say, you know, you're only as good as your last show. Well, SummerSlam was great. And Monday Night Raw was just as good. They built new storylines. They enhanced current storylines. And we're moving into Bash in Berlin with a new number one contender. We'll get to all of that in just a few short minutes but first things first um some news that broke uh concerning wwe uh, a little while ago it seems as if they're going to be getting some more luchas in the wwe and some of the two of the biggest luchas perhaps in wrestling uh penta el Cera miero and ray fenix seemingly finishing up with aew upon contract expiry and could well be heading to the WWE, and, and also that could also include the Motor City machine guns as well. Uh, no, nothing concrete or confirmed about either of those, but right now, as it stands, the reports are saying that the Motor City machine guns and the Lucha Brothers will be heading to WWE, whether that be NXT or main roster. We'll wait and see. Four very interesting uh, wrestlers there. The Machine Guns are a great team, great singles. They've held titles singly and as a team. They will be great additions. The Lucha Brothers will also be two amazing additions to the roster if this happens. Again, two that are very good as a team, two that are good at singles. Exciting times for WWE if they were to get even one of those teams on board. But seemingly... Uh, Lucha Brothers and Machine Guns heading to WWE in the near future. Uh, not too surprising. TNA, uh, TNA? Uh, AEW have a huge roster of talent. So again, we've mentioned this before. Eh? It was always going to happen. Talent was always going to switch from one to the other. Obviously, you know, the, the AEW recently uh, signed in uh, Maximum Man Models or the M&M Collection. And the Lucha Brothers heading the other way. We will find out who gets the best of that deal, I suppose, as uh, we move on into the future. <laughs> That's for sure. However, that being said, uh, two great additions. Looks like they're heading the way of the WWE. Now, let's move on to Raw. We did state that there was some new uh, uh, storyline, some new feuds and some existing feuds. Uh, the main event we'll just start with right away was the Wyatt Six against the Alpha Academy. Um, I don't think there was too many surprises that the Wyatt Six picked up the victory here. Uh, nice little homage to Bray Wyatt with the chair and the lantern and, and on all of that stuff. Michael Cole put a good point on commentary during that match where, you know, he did state that Bray Wyatt would be very proudly looking down on it. And, and I think he would. Um, the, the issue for me with this is where is the ceiling <clears throat> with the Wyatts? Where do they, you know, where is the ceiling? Are they main eventers? I would say no. Um, unlike the unlike the Creed brothers and Chad Gable, I would say yes. And I think, again, Ivy Nile will eventually join that group fully uh, in, the, in the future. Um, Mid-card is my bet for the group. And I just... The concern is how long is the fanfare of the Wyatts going to last? We all know, you know, this was Bray's group and we all, we all miss him. Everyone misses Bray. It's nearly come to the one year <clears throat> anniversary of his passing. And um, I just wonder, though, how far until, uh, how long, sorry, until we're just like, yes, it is what it is kind of thing. And maybe WWE feel the same way I, I don't know but look the main event was nice it was a frog splash victory from Lou, Dexter Loomis got the victory there was some nice tag team bits in there uh listen the the, the Cree brothers and Chad Gable are absolute mega stars uh in the WWE and they should be positioned that way they're not at the minute uh, I don't know if they will I mean WWE do have a habit sometimes of not pushing the right guys or them them never reaching that spot that you that you think they should be getting. So interesting to see how they go. Where is that ceiling with the Wyatt Six? And hopefully Chad uh, Gable and the uh, the Creed brothers will hopefully get to where they should be getting <clears throat> on the WWE roster, but we'll find out. Um, a continuation of a feud that's been going on for a while saw uh, AOP and the New Day. Uh, clash on Raw this week. Um, New Day picking up the victory in that. 
But there is a couple of side points to this one. Uh, the New Day were getting attacked after the bell, after the match had finished. Odyssey Jones, who we haven't seen since he was drafted God knows how long ago, uh, helps the New Day uh, clean house. He had Akam and Razor either side at, at one point. It was incredible. I think someone had a meme of like um, <laughs> when you refuse to uh, do two trips to the supermarket and you're carrying... Uh, two heavy loads of shopping with you. Uh, an incredible feat of strength uh, on this. But again, this is where you need to have eyes in the back of your head when you're watching WWE. They did do an interview. I'm not sure if it aired on Raw or if it was one of those Raw backstage ones that they do exclusively for social media. They did do a skit where Kofi was celebrating with Odyssey Jones and Xavier Woods come into the picture. They were talking... But Xavier Woods didn't seem overly thrilled um, by the fact that Odyssey Jones was there. Maybe I'm reading too much into that. I don't know. Um, but nevertheless, still may not, everything may be not seemingly still okay with New Day. The, the Alpha Academy did come in at one point uh, and they had a little dance and Xavier Woods was fine with dancing with Tazawa and co uh, at one point. But um Suffice to say, I still don't think we have seen the last of a potential move away from well, Xavier Woods moving away from New Day, perhaps turning. Maybe he sees Odyssey Jones as the biggie that they used to have that's no longer there anymore. So interesting bits, though, with it. Um, and I am looking forward to seeing this continuing. It kind of goes under the radar this particular feud because of everything else that's going on on Raw with Judgment Day, Gunther and everybody else. So it does go under the radar a little bit, but nevertheless, um, carrying Cross and the team, another defeat for them. I don't know. I, I think this is now finished for Karrion Cross as much as I, I like. I think he's a great worker. I think he does a lot of great work in the WWE. He's got a great promo, a great look. He's good in the ring. This, for me, they call it the final testament. This was the final opportunity. And I, and I personally think he's never going to make it in the WWE. Not because he's not talented enough, uh, but because WWE, I, I don't think they know, I don't think they really, well, I'm saying know what to do with him. I think Vince absolutely fucked him. Uh, well, not literally. Well, not that we know of <laughs> anyway. Um, but I think Vince literally screwed him out when he when he made him in the, when he brought him up to the main roster in the mask without uh, Scarlett. And I think Jeff Hardy beat him in ten seconds. Uh, that for me set the writing on the wall. And sometimes you just can't recover from it, no matter who's in charge of uh, the company. So I think Karrion Cross and the Final Testament, I think that is done uh, for me uh, going forward. But we'll see. We'll, we'll have a look and we will certainly see uh, if that's uh, the case as we move on. Another thing up in the wall, uh, the women were getting a bit of a... Uh, we're getting a little bit of luck, a little bit of loving, shall we say, on, on Raw this week. Um, the, the damage control face turn, Shayna Baszler... And her group was uh, getting into the thick of it a little bit again. So they were continuing their feud, which is absolutely great. Because uh, it gives it showcasing a lot of the women right now uh, in, in wrestling, which is good. Uh, they Obviously, there was a match with Kalana James as well uh, uh, on Raw. It was an actually really good women's match. It got a bit of time as well. And, and they took out Dakota Kai backstage, did Baszler, Stark and co., uh, and and uh, Sonia Deville, sorry, Baszler, Stark, and Deville took out Dakota Kai backstage. They had matches going on throughout Raw. Uh, nice positioning of it as well. They're, they're they're not forgetting the women's division, which is which is uh, good because obviously you know there is a obvious big story going line for the going on for the world championships, but tag team championships as well can't be forgotten about, and they shouldn't be. So really good positioning of that as well. Good that they're actually focusing a bit on on the other women on the roster rather than the, the two that we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, Lara Valkyria and Shayna Baszler actually had a good match. Uh, Valkyria won by DQ. There was a big brawl with damage control as well, uh, which then they took out Dakota Kai backstage, um, which led to EO Sky uh, teaming uh, later on with Carrie Sane. Um, so, yeah, really, really good uh, use of the division this week. Um, liking this sort of underneath feud. Again, goes a bit under the radar a little bit because of everything that's going on around it. 
but still very, very good to see um, the utilization of the women's division on Monday Night Raw. Now, Intercontinental Champion Braun Breaker, a new Intercontinental Champion Braun Breaker, um, has gifted Sami Zayn a rematch next week on Raw. Sami Zayn was having been consoled on Raw, Jey Uso and Kota saying, look, you can still do this. You know, this is still a possibility. Um, you know, you can still become a double champion and all this stuff. Um, and he's got the match next week. Two out of three falls with Braun Breaker next week on Raw, Sami Zayn, uh, looking to recapture the Intercontinental Championship. I think I know what's going to happen. Well, at least I say I think I know what's going to happen. Uh, I'll give you my thoughts on what's going to happen with Sami Zayn and actually Jey Uso uh, very, very shortly because we're going to get into something that happened on Raw, which could have a domino effect onto SmackDown. Um, there was actually Raw begun after the promo with Gunter, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, Raw had a really good uh, banger match. Sheamus and Ludwig Kaiser uh, Sheamus picking up the victory. Uh, these two are fantastic, fantastic wrestlers. Um, it was a brawl. It had everything you can expect from a Sheamus match. Uh, it was a really good broad kick uh, to finish off the match as well. Ludwig Kaiser just coming back from a rib injury uh, as well. Um, it was it was a really, really solid match, and it set the tone for chaos really on Raw because that's what we had a lot of chaos uh which we'll get to in a minute on, on raw but Seamus and Ludwig set the tone with a great great match two Ludwig's very underutilized uh because obviously he's with Gunter um he doesn't always get the flowers that he deserves Seamus he's becoming the steady Eddie on uh Seamus um but he's becoming the WWE uh steady Eddie so to speak um on on uh, for WWE, sorry. Um, anytime you need a great match, you'd put him in the ring. Sheamus, not like Dolph Ziggler was back in the day. Uh, Sheamus is now becoming that man. And he can still go and he can still win championships. But a really good, solid beatdowns or beatdowns on each other uh, to start Monday Night Raw. Really enjoyed uh, that match. Um, let's start talking about one of the stories now that was... Uh, started off in Money in the Bank, or before Money in the Bank, and has continued on to Raw this week. That being, of course, Judgment Day. Or uh, as you all know, there was that storyline for so long, the Liv Morgan Revenge Tour was going to take out the Judgment Day. Well, at SummerSlam, the Judgment Day imploded in front of our eyes. Dirty Don Mysterio took the side of Liv Morgan and cost Rhea Ripley the championship. Finn Balor, cost Damien Priest his World Heavyweight Championship to Gunter uh, at SummerSlam as well. Damien Priest wasn't very happy. He called out Finn Balor. Finn was basically saying that the person that you're, that basically that Priest was responsible for doing it to himself because Priest was, there was never any leaders in Judgment Day until Damien Priest um, set himself as a leader when he won the World Heavyweight Championship um, uh, way back now. At WrestleMania, uh, and he was then becoming the leader that he shouldn't have become. Then it went into a match later on with Damian Priest and JD McDonough, uh, which ended in a DQ because the Judgment Day started attacking Damian Priest. The one thing I would say about the beatdown was Carlito didn't necessarily, wasn't necessarily getting involved in the beatdown too much. He was kind of on the periphery. Maybe Carlito was kind of having second thoughts as to whether or not to join in and the mismatch come around because jd mcdonough was always saying that damian priest never wanted him in a judgment day anyway um and finn's got the new judgment day with Liv morgan dirty dom jd mcdonough and carlito at the minute anyway um and as dominic and Liv started getting in on the action uh, there was a bit where uh, damian priest was going to uh give Dirty Dom the uh, razor's edge. Liv, Liv pulled him away. They started the beat down. Rhea Ripley comes out to a hell of a, uh, a pop from the crowd. She runs in the ring. Dirty Dom and Liv try to run away. She catches Liv uh, just as she's trying to climb the, the sort of barricade over. She goes to hit her with a razor's edge for the table after smacking her into the ring post a couple of times. Dirty Dom does the honours and pulls Liv off of Rhea Ripley, who then goes into the ring where J.D. McDonough is back, uh, putting the boots to Priest. Priest gets up, pushes him into Mammy. She headbutts him and 
priest gives him a hell of a south of heaven choke slam and it just dropped him out so the terror twins i think they're called priest and Rhea, uh stand tall my instant thing is they're going to go for a tag match at bad maybe a tag match at bash at berlin with Rhea and Damien against either Dom. It makes more sense being Dom and Liv, but it could as easily be Finn and Liv. And then perhaps at Bad Blood in October, maybe it's Damien and Finn in the Hell in a Cell. Could go down that route. They may or may not go down that route, but that's uh, interesting food for thought, but well-worked storyline this, and they've kept it going on, and they've added elements to it, and now... Obviously, the face Damien Priest and the face Rhea Ripley have some uh, blood they want to get from the Judgment Day. But where does Carlito fit in all this? He seems so hesitant to attack Damien Priest. And when he was put in the boots to him, they weren't exactly strong boots either. <laughs> so we will see where that goes um, as we build on towards Bash at Berlin on the 31st of August. I'm really looking forward uh, to that for, for sure. CM Punk. Yes, Seth Rollins, CM Punk, and Drew McIntyre was all on Raw. Yes, they had a promo battle, but there is now a big twist to that. And we'll get into it. CM Punk was, uh, you know, smiling. Yeah, I lost, but you know what? You guys are still chanting my name. And Seth Rollins come out and he was in a good mood as well. McIntyre come out. They again, Punk wants the round two with McIntyre, um, which I think we'll get. Or oh, we were definitely going to get it. Depends. Just depends on when, when and if. Now, a side story to this was after the Ludwig Kaiser match with Vinci, uh, Bronson Reed said to uh, Adam Pearce, "Look, you know, why didn't you have me on a match?" And he's going to basically take matters into his own hands now on Raw. So there's just a side note. Um, as this um, promo was going on, as I said, Punk wants uh, McIntyre a second time. McIntyre brings out the bracelet again and Punk ends up chasing uh, McIntyre throughout the arena and Seth Rollins is in the ring and all of a sudden Big Bronson Reed comes in and absolutely decimates Seth Rollins. I mean, he hit about five tsunamis on him. It was a really interesting, I totally threw me on this. Uh, but it does take Seth Rollins out of the McIntyre punk feud at least for a little bit of time because now he's going to have to deal with big Bronson Reed and I'm really interested I love I think Bronson Reed's great he's got a lot of good stuff going about him and I'm just wondering if this is the start for Bronson Reed uh, to start hitting those heights that he should be hitting on WWE and what a way to start by attacking Seth Rollins. Perhaps that is bash at Berlin again. Um, one thing I will say about the Triple H bookings of pay-per-views is ma matches are five or six. So you we're not going to get too many on the card. So we have to remember that. And you've got to count into SmackDown matches as well. The world title match is already set. We're going to get to that in a, in a, in a minute or two. Um, but Seth Rollins and Bronson Reed, I dig this. I am really digging this and uh, McIntyre and Punk can go and settle their score and Seth will have to deal with uh, Big Bronson Reed. Very well done segment again. Made Bronson Reed look like a star in two minutes, uh, which was great to see. And it's good to see Seth Rollins getting some, uh, well, getting a new feud, which could actually work for him as well. But this will definitely be the making of Bronson Reed, uh, in my opinion. Uh, speaking of Seth, uh, more to do with Becky Lynch, some news before we head into the last bit of Raw. Um, Becky Lynch, uh, done an a and they've done a documentary on her and on the A&E documentary recently, and she insinuated that it was a hell of a career and it was a pleasure being the man, but being the mum is a privilege or something along those lines. Don't know what the situation is with uh, Becky Lynch, whether she will be back in WWE or not Uh those words, I mean, sometimes you say that just to kind of, you know, get you away from it a little bit so that, you know, so that perhaps you're gearing up for a big return, but you want to put plant the seed that you're done, you know, or you're being away for an extended period of time. Um, not entirely sure with this one. Not a lot has come out. I think 
what has come out was they're not expect the WWE maybe not expecting her to leave or or at least you know for the period of time. But yeah, those words are always worrying when you hear that, especially when they come out of the blue a little bit. We know Becky left a little while ago just after WrestleMania. Um, maybe it's just time for her to be a mum again for a little bit longer, and she'll come back when she's ready. Maybe she is done. Maybe that is it. Focusing on her books, focusing on being a mum, which is just, you know you can't ever ever take that away from her as well so interesting one with that i'm not sure where they're going with it whether it's just a storyline whether she'll be back or not but hopefully we haven't seen the last of becky lynch in wwe there was obviously the AEW fans getting a bit excited that perhaps we'll see rebecca quinn uh being all elite can't see that if i'm being honest um i think she will always be wherever her husband is um so seth wherever seth is becky will be so my assumption would be that she'll be staying with the wwe or maybe she'll just won't wrestle at all and she'll make sporadic appearances uh as and when but whatever happens she's been an incredible performer for the wwe for the last 10 or so years so if it is the end for becky it's been a great a career we've enjoyed growing with you in the role if it's not the end we look forward to seeing you when you are back so earlier on on raw there was this uh before we get to the main of the the gunther part which actually started raw i know we, we're doing things in weird orders at the moment but um nick oldis and adam pierce have agreed that some talents can go on both shows which defeats the object of the draft in my opinion I don't want to get started on that. A Town Down Under was on Raw. They did beat Miz and R Truth. Um, but what I think about this, and there is also a Gunther thing, which we need to get to in a minute as well, uh, which concerns someone from SmackDown. But this could be how they get Jay and Sami Zayn onto SmackDown to rejoin the OG bloodline, perhaps. Could it be? Could be. Uh, it could well be that. <clears throat> um, but anyway, yeah, A-Town Down Under was on Raw this week as uh, an agreement with Nick Aldis, um, which who cares about drafts anyway, right? But if it does mean that Sammy and Jay go back to SmackDown and be a part of the OG bloodline, I am all for it. And you will not get another moan out of me about it, I promise. <laughs> um, right, <clears throat> let's get down to business. Main event of Basha Berlin. Gunther was coming out for his championship celebration. Uh, Ludwig Kaiser was obviously there. It was before his match with Sheamus. Um, but he was interrupted, <clears throat> excuse me, by the Viper, Randy Orton, who basically come out and said, we have got to clear up this mess from King of the Ring, where there was a controversial finish, if you remember, to the match. Triple H did state that Randy Orton would get a rematch, and he absolutely is getting the rematch at Basher Berlin. And this time, it is for the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, obviously, Randy Orton being on SmackDown, so we'll have to cover all of that stuff off again. We're not want to get into it right now because, yeah, it is what it is, shall we say. Um, but Randy Orton gets a title shot, bash at Berlin. Obviously, Gunther's winning this. I think he's got to get to a point when he starts winning things cleanly. Obviously, the Judgment Day cost Damian Priest a match. I don't want Kaiser getting involved i would like to see gunther win this clean because of last time we had that bit of a iffy finish shall we say at king of the ring so i i would like gunther i mean i'm assuming gunther will get the win on this and he's near enough in his hometown of uh, he's in, from austria that is germany so he's very close to being his hometown so i'd like to think that gunther will get the victory it will be a clean victory and he will retain the world heavyweight championship but gunther randy orton again I'm cool with that. <laughs> I'm very cool with that. I've got no issue whatsoever with that happening on my watch, uh, so to speak. So I'm very much looking forward uh, to seeing that match. That will probably be the main event at Bash at Berlin. Uh, look, guys, Raw was great. There is no doubt about it. They've done a lot of good stuff on Monday Night Raw this week. And as I said to Andy, who come back for the SummerSlam review, check that out. It was great to have Andy back on the show, I believe. He's going to be doing, he's going to be called Mr. PLE going forward. I believe he's doing a lot of the PLE reviews with me. So he will next be on in just a few short weeks before he heads off to America. I think we'll be doing the uh, Bash at Berlin review together as well. It'd be great to have him back on doing that. But as we said before, you know, the continuation that we've managed to watch three hours of Raw again with no fast forwarding, no, you know, shying away from it. 
this is a great time to be a wrestling fan, not just in the WWE, but all over the wrestling world. It is great to be a fan, no matter who you support, to keep it watching on your keep watching every show that you're watching. Keep it locked on here. They're hitting the Turnbuckle channel as well. EC3's interview drops tomorrow with a few or choice words for someone on the NWA roster. Uh, Blacksmith Apparel that come on. Uh, we're going to be, that's going to be dropping next week. Great guys. Get your merch on Blacksmith Apparel. Go onto their website to get that. They're going to be doing some good stuff coming up uh, in the UK over here. Uh, in two weeks time uh, over at Wembley so keep your eyes peeled on that keep your lookout for our boys at the Ringside Renaissance uh, podcast as well they're doing some great things Some re they're two really great guys awesome show they're going out go and check that out uh, as well if you if you ever want to go and see some Americans talk American wrestling uh, go and have a view of their channel they're two great guys are uh, Pretty Deadly Jesse and Andrew Combat Jones go and check those out uh, well, there'll be more interviews dropping. There'll be more review shows dropping this week. NWA, TNA, uh, Dynamite, Collision, Rampage, and SmackDown will all be coming your way this week. So keep it locked to HTT Buckle on uh, X, hitting the Turnbuckle Podcast, and all other social media platforms. And until next time, everybody, buckle down and stay safe. <laughs>